Hello there. This week has very much felt a bit like the lull before the storm news-wise, as despite the release of the regular weekly War Within beta build, there's been a distinct lack of major announcements or updates from Blizzard. That's not to say that we've completely nothing to report on, as data mining has released a potential hint around when Blizzard are hoping to launch the War Within pre-patch. And Blizzard also did a major interview with Wowhead focusing on endgame PvE content that has shared a bunch of interesting new information in Blizzard's plans, especially for Mythic Plus affixes. Starting with the pre-patch release date, and Wowhead have managed to data mine the in-game assets for the pre-patch splash screen, which includes some text that reveals that the pre-patch event Radiant Echoes will be launching on July the 30th. Now there's really no point putting that date on the splash screen unless the pre-patch launches before that date and it's very much the norm for the pre-patch events to launch a week or two after the pre-patch drops which obviously implies that the pre-patch will be landing sometime before the 30th. There is one other piece of relevant information in the mix, and that's the Great Push Dungeon Competition. The Great Push Finals are currently scheduled for July the 19th and 21st. Now, with the Great Push having already started, I think it's vanishingly unlikely that Blizzard would want the event's finals to be running with completely changed talent trees. I guess they could update the live game and keep the competition realms in the old build, but part of the appeal of these events is that the competitors are playing in the same base game as the rest of us, so I personally I think that's a bit improbable. Put all this together and we've really only left with one date, Tuesday the 23rd of July, or obviously the 24th for Europe. Now, it hopefully goes without saying that until Blizzard formally announces the date, they are free to change it. More likely, this represents their aspirations rather than a firm promise. But at the same time, with the early access release on 22nd of August, there isn't honestly a whole lot of space for them to push these dates back. Assuming this is the date, we're likely to get the formal announcement very soon, potentially even this coming week. Another potential factor that could support this date is the announcement by Blizzard that they plan to retire some of the guild services from the in-game shop as of July the 22nd. Both guild faction and realm transfers are being removed as an option. Most likely this is due to guilds as of the pre-patch being both cross-faction and cross-realm. This just happens to be one day before my best guess for the pre-patch release. Funny that. This has generated a small bit of pushback on the forums, but I'm wondering if this means that it will become possible to transfer guilds to characters in different realms and factions just by transferring the guildmaster. In any event, the only remaining paid guild service will be the guild name change. If you don't have access to the beta but are curious about the changes that are coming up, the pre-patch is now available on the PTR. The PTR began with a test of the new warband conversion process. I took the time to copy over 30 characters and I have to say the conversion was pretty painless. I was able to log in just as fast as usual, and as far as I could tell, things like the account bound achievements and reps showed up pretty much right away. This was despite warnings from Blizzard that this could be quite a slow process. Now obviously, that was the PTR, and it probably will be slower in live, but if it's something you've been wondering about or a little bit worried about, hopefully I can set your mind at rest. It actually looked pretty solid. One thing that did emerge from the test is that while things like dungeon portals are now fully account-wide, raid skips are not. The raid skip quests did report that they have been done in the warband, so the game clearly knows that the skips are not enabled on our alts. Hopefully this is just a bug or oversight that the Blizzard devs can address as these not being account wide does seem pretty much to be counter to the whole ethos of warbands. This week's War Within beta build focused heavily in hero talent tuning and it's certainly beginning to feel that the team's focus is moving away from feature development towards bug fixing, polish and tuning. One big change that was shared by Blizzard is for PvP players. Yes, PvP is getting some love. Rated PvP players will be getting a quest that allows them to get their first weapons by around week 3 of the new season without having to spend any conquests. This is likely one of the measures to help offset the removal of the PvP role from the Great Vault. Now for fans of Fallout Dungeons, and Blizzard has already confirmed that at least the 4 leveling dungeons would be part of the Fallout system. But this week's beta build has enabled testing for 7 out of the 8 Fallout Dungeons, 
with the only missing one being the Dawnbreaker. Now, the Dawnbreaker is in the Fallout Dungeon UI. It's just locked out, which hints to me that we can probably expect to see all eight in due course. Staying with the theme of quickfire developments in the dungeon bonus quest for The War Within, which, like the Dragonflight one, will likely pop up every few weeks, can now be completed in heroic difficulty as well as mythic. This is likely a response to the changes in dungeon difficulty with heroic dungeons taking the place of Mythic Zero. This quest will go back to dropping a heroic raid piece as was the case for most of Dragonflight. With heroic dungeons being queuable, this potentially makes this quest quite accessible to a lot more players. By far the most interesting development though was an interview that Wowhead did with game directors Ian Hazikostas and Morgan Day. I'm going to put a link down below to the full interview transcript and I do encourage you to read it all through in context, but this interview which focused in PvE Endgame includes a bunch of new information about the War Within Mythic Plus and raiding that I found quite interesting. The highlight for me was the discussion around the Mythic Plus affixes, and the good news is that Blizzard have heard the feedback and are planning some more changes, with Ian saying, we're far from done when it comes to the current state of beta. We're looking to roll out a couple more pretty significant swings in how we approach affixes in the Mythic Plus system. We did also get a little bit more information on why they made the choices they had in terms of which affixes to drop and which ones to keep for the War Within. Now if you want more information than the changes they've already proposed, I am going to link to last week's news video which has more information in this. But in this interview, Morgan did have this to say in the subject. I think one of the major design goals there that we could try to reiterate on more is that we were trying not to create new nameplates in the gameplay space. We're not trying to create things that might be considered an ability or mechanic in a boss fight. You're not spawning a new ad. There's not quaking or volcanic where feel like these mechanics that are kind of just happening. Now, it's slightly disappointing thing for me was the lack of any discussion in the way the proposed affixes look likely to fall more heavily in tanks and healers than DPS. I'd really have liked to have heard if that's something that's on the radar and if that's something they plan to look at as they make more changes. One of the most significant things was in response to Bowhead asking if affixes are really necessary. Ian spent quite a bit of time talking about the differences between the competitive key pushing Mythic Plus scene and what I would describe as the more mainstream scene where we do dungeons for gear or for fun with mates, typically capping out at around Mythic Plus 10 or maybe a level or two above that. While Ian spoke about how at the higher end the fun can come from the progress in solving problems and the affixes can be a pediment to that fun, he also said this, Affixes continue to serve a valuable purpose in varying that experience week over week, slightly changing the puzzle that the group needs to solve. We've heard feedback from the community that asks if they're just there to add difficulty, why are they needed? We have health and damage increases to add difficulty and we agree. The primary purpose is not to add difficulty, it's to add variety. Now, as a mainstream player myself, I have to say I disagree with what Ian had to say in this. I don't really find that affixes do meaningfully change my runs. For the most part, even at a plus 10 as a tank, I'm mostly just doing the same stuff every week. And the reasons for wiping are usually down to the amount of mistakes that we made in ads or bosses. All the affixes really do, in my opinion, is just add difficulty. While they are technically different, that really doesn't translate to making the experience have much variety. There was almost a hint in Ian's answer that he thought the affixes should be removed from the high end, but stay at the lower levels, which is honestly a kind of bizarre sentiment to my mind. I really don't know anyone who plays at the lower or mainstream levels who actually enjoy affixes or think that they make the dungeon experience better. If anything, the majority of folks who argue that affixes should exist come more from the higher end of the player base. I think it's unlikely that Blizzard will remove them from the high end and leave them at the lower end, but if they did that, the backlash would be immense, as it effectively says that the higher end of the game, who are best placed to deal with more mechanical complexity, get to have an easier experience than the mainstream player base, and that's honestly just a bizarre thought. Unless, that is, a change like this was used to switch the focus away from negative to positive affixes. 
One of the barriers to having positive affixes is the risk that they can end up making the higher levels of Mythic Plus feel easier instead of harder. But if we have a positive affix and it's then removed at the higher levels, that removal could result in the higher levels becoming more difficult, which is exactly what you want. Now, I do have some fond memories of some of the more positive affixes like Encrypted, but these are something that they have, at least with the current model, seemed reluctant to bring back. When Blizzard were discussing what the changes they are currently looking at is, Morgan Day did have this to say. We're taking a step back there. What are the affixes and what are they achieving week over week? For the audience that is less looking to push rating and be extremely competitive, and what is the excitement when you have this new affix introduced week over week? Now, I don't know about you, but excitement is certainly not the word I or most folks use when we think about most affixes that Blizzard have introduced. For me, dread would be a far more accurate description. And it's great to hear that the team are hopefully starting to think in terms about if affixes are actually adding enjoyment or not. Morgan then went on to say that they are taking a big step back, so hopefully they are cooking something up for the war within that will be a little bit different to what they presented to us last week. Speaking personally, the suggestion that they may be open to having another go at affixes for the war within is very welcome, but it's also very surprising in multiple levels. The introduction of Afflicted, Incorporeal and Entangling got a far more stronger backlash than the current set of proposals have. And despite that backlash back then, they did stand their ground. Add in the fact that the War Within is barely over two months away, albeit the season doesn't start until closer to three months away, and I would have put money on them doing the same thing this time around, that is, digging in their heels and being stubborn. Now, I do think it is important to manage your expectations here. Time is ticking, and the developers are still constrained in what they can deliver before the season starts. But all this does at least suggest that they are aware that they have missed the mark. If I was given feedback to the team, it would be that whatever you do, take a step back and ask yourself, does this really add to the experience of the game for the vast majority of players? And if the answer is no, to seriously considering just removing it. Removing stuff that adds complexity without making the experience better will ultimately free up the time and space that perhaps could be better spent elsewhere to enhance the experience of your players. That said, if the team are cooking something new, I am pretty excited to see what they serve up. But what about all of you? Do you think the current approach adds to or detracts from Mythic Plus? Is Sanguine the reason you don't tank in Mythic Plus? Or is it even the reason that you do? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving on from in-game news, and the series of short stories continues this week with the Lilac in the Stone. This story is narrated in the first person by Magni Bronzebeer's daughter Moira Thosarian as she seeks to encourage her son and Magni's heir Dagrin to take his place as the leader of the dwarves. Now personally speaking, the writing style of the narration isn't entirely to my taste. Moira's portrayal was, in my opinion, a little bit self-indulgent, but at the same time, it did strongly hint towards some past issues in the relationship between Magni and Moira, issues that may not point Magni in as an entirely positive light. I won't say any more on that subject, as I don't want to do story spoilers in these episodes, but both Moira and her son, and indeed Magni, are playing a major part in the War Within campaign, so this story does add some useful colour and background to the storyline and I do still recommend taking a look at it. As always, there's a link down below. World of Warcraft is returning to Gamescon this year. Blizzard have in the past has a presence at Gamescon, but in recent years they had decided to skip it. This year, Xbox has announced a pretty major presence at Gamescon and Blizzard will be joining them. Gamescon is scheduled for August the 24th to 25th which overlaps with the War Within Early Access, so I doubt it will be used for any major announcements, unless that is they decide to use it as a platform to share info for the War Within patches, or perhaps even an updated roadmap. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Just before I do drop off, the Midsummer Fire Festival is now underway in-game. This event hasn't seen any major revamps similar to the other events, but there is, predictably enough, a new Dragon Riding skin to collect from the Lord Ahun encounter. 
you can queue up for that in the dungeon finder now blizzard did share that as well as it having a much higher drop chance on the first run per day per account they are also adding bad luck protection to it so that the chance will increase further in subsequent days now the issue of low drop rates for holiday events has been a hot topic and it's really nice to see the team taking action to reduce the impact of bad rng in events like this Blizzard have always been extremely resistant to the idea of bad luck protection in the game and hopefully this is suggesting that the philosophies might change and we might see similar mechanisms coming into other areas of the game. This though does raise an interesting question. In the roadmap for patch 1027 it announced a new holiday event and that new event is yet to appear. With time running out before the pre-patch, one more really wonders what this will turn out to be. Whatever it is, I kind of feel that we'll have to find out quite soon. Well, that's all the excitement for this week. In the coming weeks, I have a bunch of deep dives into the upcoming features of The War Within to share with you. Along with these news updates to discuss all of the hot issues as The War Within comes ever closer. So do make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new video goes live. And if you've enjoyed this video or just found it useful, please be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.